All right, today I looked into replacing AA batteries with a lithium ion battery pack. In this case, I'm using a Dynamo uh, Electra Tag handheld tagger that runs off four AA batteries. In this case, I was using some almost barely there uh, rechargeable batteries. These are about almost to these two here are about three years old and these Duracell ones are almost five years old and barely have any life left into them. Now four AA batteries means they need an input of about six volts. Uh, most items that run on batteries will run on a range of voltages ranging from four volts up to upwards of um, six, 6.2 volts. Uh, since these batteries tend to be dead at around 0.8 volts. So there's a decent range of voltages you can deal with. That means your standard lithium ion battery. 3.7 volts. Uh, will actually run this device pretty well. Now this runs at 4 AA batteries quickly examining it, I see there's an actually a DC input that runs off 9 volts at 1.3 amps, uh, which leads me to believe there's actually a boost converter in here to get those batteries up to 9 volts. Now we'll see the one I've already placed in here. Uh, we got 600 milliamp, which is actually down to uh, 520 milliamps. This is a used battery pack. I harvested it. Uh, but thanks to the how popular drones are, you can pick up batteries uh, pretty cheaply now for between one and four bucks for a 600 milliamp battery, depending on where you select it. Uh, now, this had no protection circuit in here, so the protection the battery from getting too low, I soldered in an inline protection circuit using two JST connectors. Uh, normally, I'll have this heat shrinked and protected pretty well, so I don't have to worry about a short. But I left it uncovered just to show you. Well, this comes into the center ones, and the battery output comes to the outer ones. Now. Uh, this has a built-in boost converter, so I don't really have to worry about uh, the battery voltage. As long as there's a protection circuit between the battery and the item and the power source in here, it'll run fine. So I just soldered this tag to the positive here and the negative here. You can actually sort of see the wires come popping up right there which then goes into the boost converter that's on the board which then controls the rest of the unit. Now, other devices don't have built-in boost converters and you'll need to supply your own. In which case I have the MT3608. This takes 3 volts and you can boost it up to 24 volts using this adjustable potometer. Potometer? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But basically, input, screw that to the correct voltage, output. And there's a couple different models. In this case, I used a model with actually a micro USB input right here. Uh, this is my per preferred lithium ion controller. It's um, the 5466. It's a charge controller with built-in protection circuit. So normally you just connect the battery right here. Configure that to your output and connect the battery to the source. Now these JST connectors are very snug. I pre-configured this one out to put 6 volts out. You see it powers quite right up. Uh, since this device has a built-in boost converter, it's not actually necessary and will reduce your life of your battery since it's going through 
the converter to, from 3.7 volts up to 6 volts, and then it's going from 6 volts up to 9 volts. But for devices that don't have a built-in boost converter, this is preferred. Now, price range, uh, not counting the battery, which I actually salvaged, um, you're looking at about a dollar for the boost converter and 75 cents to a dollar for the 5466 control lithium ion battery controller charger module. Um, and these GST connectors are pretty cheap. I, I like them a lot. I prefer this con type of connector, actually. Uh, they, they're sold under GST waterproof connectors. I don't actually believe they're waterproof. Uh, but they got a nice interlock that you can pull off with hand instead of having to use a pair of pliers because these JST connectors are very, very snug. All in all, this module costs you less than $2 to build. And if you buy the battery, uh, that's another $1 to $3 depending on your how many milliamp hours you would like. In which case, I'm just using this one right here. And I've printed about 40 of these tags on it on a recharge, and I haven't had to recharge it yet. Snaps into there. If I ever wish to convert this back to the double A's, pretty simple. I just disconnect the battery and I drilled a hole here that you can see and I just slide that right into the hole like this. And I can fit my double A batteries back in there, no problem. Pull that back out. I can charge it using the lithium-ion pack. Selecting your pack. In this case, the 18650 cell would not exactly fit. Uh, I chose a flat pack out of convenience. And if I really wanted to, I could actually stack multiple flat packs on top of each other and they would still fit in pretty well. I could fit two of them in here and double my capacity. Uh, but I'd rather keep one on the charger and one in the pack. So once this one does die, I, I have a simple recharger. Uh, this setup also means when lithium ion batteries do happen to um, fall out of service for whatever new one that comes up, I believe uh, lithium FE, lithium iron batteries are the new thing coming up. There's also gallium batteries that are supposedly going to replace these. Allows you to use your device for quite a while. Now, since there is no boost circuit in here, I'm just going to pull file up. Here we go. Here's something. And print. Every now and then it'll give me a low battery warning. Right there. Because it's actually seeing the pack at 3.5 volts. But as you can see there's no problem printing. No dimming. No lines. Well, thank you for watching my video. Um, I'll put in what these cells are called so you can actually look them up. I won't put the exact link because the links will die. I get most of my product from eBay. If you do happen to buy a lithium-ion battery from eBay, test the capacity. 
I use a B6 IMAX B6 charger. It does have a built-in capacity checker. This is actually a knockoff controller. I had to recalibrate it correctly. Uh, but it do, does go for eBay for around 10 bucks uh, versus the official one which will run you around $60. If you do have the actual money to buy the official one, it, it is a little bit better than this one. At the very least, it has more functions. And get the actual capacity of your batteries that you are delivered. Otherwise, you'll end up with this one, which was sold as a um, 5,000 milliamp battery, but only has 240 milliamps.